the home of the do-it-yourself trucker. When everything goes wrong, you got to redneck and knives. Yeah, this is Ed with Redneck and Knives coming to you live from Corpus Christi, Texas, and uh, we're having a great night here. This is January 3rd, 2021. Wish everybody a happy new year out there. Yeah, we're going to talk about a few things for the next couple hours and uh, hopefully get some callers in and, uh, and chat up a little bit and see what's going on out there. Hope everybody's having a great weekend and uh, staying safe out there on the road. You know, a lot of changes has happened here in the last couple of months. You know, we got a, a new administration coming in with the election being uh, over and everything. Uh, so that means that what happens is, is they're going to choose a different transportation secretary. And it's kind of kind of interesting about how trucking is going to get involved in that. We're going to chat about that a little bit. Uh, a couple of articles uh, were uh, examining what might happen. And I'm just going to throw my two cents in out there and see what's going on with that. But uh, you can check us out at uh, www.redneckandknives.com. And we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So you can follow us on there. And we appreciate everything you guys are doing out there for us on the road. So the one thing I wanted to chat about with is uh, what's going on with like uh, the administration and uh, and what they're going to bring in. Now they announced that they they had announced that they had selected a a secretary of transportation, and of course when when the speech was made and all the announcements were made, they were more focused on like you know the air traffic control with the uh, with the airline industry, and of course the. Uh, the biggest thing I guess related to trucking is the infrastructure about building the highways because mostly let's let's just face it uh, this new administration the, the main priority is going to be the environment and and the climate change and all that and transportation is a big part of that so so let's let's be ready for maybe some new admission standards coming in and that's gonna that's gonna affect a lot of the way that new trucks are made so that could be that could be affect some things about trucking so I wanted to, to discuss about uh, a couple of articles that came out about the new administration about how they're doing things and one of the ones that stuck out to me was uh, Landline magazine uh, they of course represented by OIDA and all funded through there and of course OIDA being a political action committee and a representative of the uh, independent uh, owner operators out there they sent a letter to the new administration the uh, uh, coming in showing their priorities and also making a bid and I was going to point this out that they they suggested uh, well, it's uh, Todd Spencer had uh, had made his pitch to be the next director of the FMCSA. And I thought that was kind of interesting because although Wawaida might be good in some areas, they're not in a lot, and and they've got their flaws too. And it's and of course we all see it uh, depending on where we're at in the trucking industry. Uh, they they do a lot of good things. They provide a lot of good services for drivers. But as far as their support for any kind of standards or or publications or anything, they uh, they are against a lot of rules that probably a lot of truckers support. And uh, we just, you know, I wanted to kind of go over those a little bit because they did have an article here. This was back in December 3rd. They posted an article in the, the Landline Now uh, magazine uh, online. And uh, and it, it started out with uh, the uh, the pursuit of the infrastructure funding. Of course, we all agree that that's probably a big priority. Um, it starts out here with, with truckers reeling from the relentless pressure since the ELD mandate followed by a global pandemic, the Owner Operator Independent Driver Association has taken a preemptive strike for the rights of truckers with the presumed President-elect Joe Biden. There is no shortage of issues confronting the trucking industry as we head into 2021 in an effort to put those issues front and center. The Owner Operator Independent Driver Association sent a letter to President-elect Joe Biden's transportation transition team about the priorities of OIDA members. The letter which focused on such topics as infrastructure funding, truck parking, minimum insurance, speed limiters, detention time, broker transparency, and driver training was sent on Thursday, December 3rd. So, I mean, there's a lot of issues there to cover. And, and I think that OIDA does not sit pretty much on a driver's side of that. They, I think they're more just like they're independent owner operator association. So that means that they're more focused on the independent drivers. And although I don't agree with a lot of things that it might either help or hurt the independents, but also it doesn't really affect them that much. So the rules, like the ELD, I don't like the ELD mandate. I run ELDs in the job I do. I don't think that the owner operator or an independent driver should be required to do it just because I am. I don't think that's right. I think that to each its own. If you want to get out there and run your own, do what you own. I mean, in my opinion, I think there's a lot of responsible drivers out there that are hindered by the ELD mandate. And uh, and that, that's just that's just unfair to a lot of the drivers that are good, safe drivers. The ones that 
Yeah, you know, in, in my opinion, if you're out there uh, driving tired and then you have accidents, you know, I, you, you should go to prison for doing that because it's stupid. Okay, you know, driving tired is one thing. Having accidents, you know, hey, when I'm tired, I pull over. And if you're if you're a driver out there and you drive tired and you know, I don't know if you're having accidents or not, but maybe you're running people off the road. You know, that ain't right. You should be getting off the road. And you should be doing that. So, but. But there's a lot of issues out there, and we can talk about them. I, I, I love talking about the issues one-on-one -on -one with people and everything. So it's uh, it's kind of coming from every perspective, and, and it's, it's basically just doing the right thing and trying to figure out a way. But I think the one thing that we can all agree on is the infrastructure funding. And that was one of the big topics here that the uh, OIDA supports, and that's the first topic that they laid out in the article that they published. And it, it went on like this. Topping the list of priorities is infrastructure funding and trying to make the process equitable for truck drivers. OIDA said professional drivers continue to favor the current user fee structure and would prefer reasonable increases to the federal gasoline and diesel fuel taxes. The association said it is open to further discussion about the vehicle's miles travel tax, but that many OIDA members remain skeptical that the VMT system is the solution to the highway funding problems. One funding route OIDA doesn't want to see the next administration go down is tolling. OIDA has constantly opposed any federal expansion of tolling policies. The association wrote, Research has shown that tolling is an extremely wasteful method of funding our highways compared to fuel taxes. Additionally, toll roads consistently fail to meet revenue projections, creating unanticipated funding shortfalls, inevitable rate increases, and traffic diversions to non-tolled routes. And I completely 100% agree upon all this. It is crazy to uh, to try to, I mean, it, tolling is has a purpose. And that purpose, like a lot of the places that, that use it back in the day, they they built the road, they put a toll. Once the road was, once the, uh, whatever they call them, either the loan or the bonds or whatever, once that was paid back, they took the toll roads out. Because you were supposed to fund it based off the, uh, the revenue generated from the gas tax, from the diesel tax, <clears throat> when you buy diesel fuel or, or gas tax, gasoline, you pay a tax. That tax is supposed to directly fund the highway program to build roads and bridges and all that stuff. Of course, that's not how it does it. So, you know, we're stuck with what we got. But uh, I do think that uh, if they do do in if they do increase it at all, it needs to focus on the tax, not the miles traveled. In fact, I think that there needs to be some type of federal mandate to come down to tell the states. I mean, I don't know. I don't like it to where they tell the states they can and can't do something, but there's a lot of truck drivers that avoid states based on their uh, charging of the uh, different taxes. You know, a lot of drivers don't run East Coast because they don't want to go through Indiana because Indiana has uh, had that tax. They don't go into Kentucky because Kentucky has the, uh, the use tax. You know, there's a lot of places, people that avoid those, and it's, uh, it's crazy to think that, you know, these states... They think that it serves a purpose, but then it doesn't really, you know, it, it, they, I think that they probably should stick to a single tax and just worry about that one tax and then focus on it. And then drivers would be more, uh, open to increasing the rates of that one tax, as long as it's just one tax. When you start adding in multiple taxes, he's like, well, you're only paying five cents for this. Yeah, but I'm paying five cents for this other one and five cents for this other one. The next thing you know, you're paying too much. And that's, that's what. Uh, truckers, mostly independents, do not want to do is because that just creates more paperwork. And of course, if you're an independent where you own one truck and you are the owner and operator of that business, then, you know, more paperwork is not what you want. So, so focusing on that is a big priority. Uh, but the, any other way, you know, we want to see money being spent on the highways, on the roads and bridges. We want, we want the roads to be good. You know, better roads means longer lasting trucks. And, you know, anybody out there, as a, as a truck driver, they, you know, construction is bad, but guess what? No construction is even worse. So, so we, we totally agree on all that stuff. Uh, yeah, you know what? Before I go any further, I wanted to send a shout out to one of our great sponsors, and that's uh, DPF Regeneration. They've been a sponsor of us for a couple of years here at Redneck and I's, and we, uh, we love having them on board with us. Uh, we always try to send a business their way whenever we hear that people need their services. And uh, we think that... Uh, we should be able to support the companies out there that support trucking. So if you uh, if you got an issue with your uh, regen system or your particular filter, 
then uh, give them a call and they, they should be able to direct you to the right place to get to get you helped out. That's uh, at uh, webakem.com. That's uh, DPF Regeneration. So uh, check them out. We appreciate everything that they do for Redneck and Eyes and everything. So appreciate that. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us provide a great truck show experience, please consider making a tax-deductible donation to Redneck and Eyes. Please visit our website at www.redneckandeyes.com for more details. Thank you.